welcome His Excellency Julius Bayo, the President of Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is relatively a small country in West Africa that has gone through different periods of peace, of turmoil, but it's now determined to be a player in uplifting the lives of its people and achieving two key sustainable development goals one of access to quality education and that of peace, justice, and strong institutions. And I believe that these two SDGs are critical for any country to be able to What prompted you to focus on these two SDGs? Thank you very much. Um, Sierra Leone went through a civil war for about 11 years. And during that time, there was untold suffering on the people of Sierra Leone. We, we, are, we, we are definitely not thinking about development at that time. A lot of destruction. We lost our development focus, and um, for 11 years we were busy with war. When you, when you finish or you go through a situation of that nature, definitely the collective memory of our people is all about the suffering and again the determination never, never to have war again. That accounts for, as one of the reasons, for why we are serious about peace and strong institutions and making sure that justice prevails. Because in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report, uh, injustice was um, cited as one of the reasons for the war. And uh, we have decided that we should pay attention. Uh, we should make sure that everybody has access to justice so we have in Sierra Leone the Liga Aid Board, and we are part of a lot of international initiatives to make sure that um, justice prevails in the world. And we are also committed to the rule of law to make sure that um, people can seek justice and can get justice. Coming to um, SDG 4, which is quality education, we were once the Athens of West Africa, but as of today, three out of uh, every five adults in Sierra Leone cannot read or write. And we are talking about development, and we are talking about sustainable development, and taking stock at the end of, uh, by 2030. Definitely a population that is not educated, is not ready for achieving that. Your Excellency, uh, relatively a lot of the population in Sierra Leone is made up of young people. I believe over 60% are under 25 years. Uh, what, what, what is the focus on peace and education going to impact these young people? Well, the culture of peace is what I've spoken about. We want to make sure that there is no, we, we never go back to war. Uh, we have, as part of our infrastructure that is ongoing now, 
putting the commission together, the Peace and National Cohesion Commission that we part, that we form part of our national infrastructure to pay attention to all conflict instigating factors and to nip them on board. Um, for our young people, we have to make sure that they are educated to be a meaningful, meaningful part of the development process. They, they have to have uh, the requisite skills and knowledge to make them productive to be part of uh, the sustainable development process. So the development process itself is quite complex, I must say. Yes. And therefore, to be a part of it, we must have the, the right knowledge and skills. And we are just about entering into the fourth industrial revolution. We cannot go or approach or be a uh, fit for purpose as a nation, especially for the young people, if we do not make sure that they have the requisite education and skills. We don't want to be at the receiving end of the fourth industrial revolution after having lost on the first, second, and third. So that is why we are paying attention to education, and that is why we want peace, because it is in that ecosystem that sustainable development can take place. So you've talked about you know, the role of building these institutions and education. Uh, what do you see as the role of investments in sustainable development projects, including access to energy, going to play to ensure that you create these opportunities for these young people? And more so, what has your government been doing to create enabling environment for people within your country, within Africa and beyond, who want to be able to partner with, the, with your government? Well, uh, energy is everything as far as uh, sustainable development is concerned. Of course, uh, we are all thriving towards uh, um, um, economic development, making progress, social and economic development. And that is putting a lot of pressure on the environment and our, our natural environment. We must make sure that it is as we, as we engage the forward momentum for development, we make sure that it is sustainable in the sense that we are able to develop, but also make sure that our future generations can develop. But also making sure that whatever we are doing is able to go forward, like uh, food security, health security, and the other issues. Uh, energy is important, and um, we have a lot of potential for energy uh, in Sierra Leone, especially renewable energy. Um, we have one hydro, one major hydro um, uh, source at the moment, but we have potential for a lot of others. Um, we have been able to establish uh, in 54 communities one of the largest um, off-solar, off-grid, um, solar energy uh, projects in Sierra Leone at the moment, and uh, there is another 50 or more in, in, in progress. So in terms of solar penetration in far to rich areas, we have, we have taken the lead in West Africa, and we want to continue on that front so that um, people out of the city can also enjoy the benefits of, uh, of, of energy. So there, is a, there are a lot of opportunities. Um, our energy access at, the, at, the, at this point is woefully low, 17%. And that is troubling. But in as much as it is a problem, it is uh, definitely an opportunity for those who want to invest. And we have created this, this sort of policy and legal framework to, and also incentives for anybody wanting to invest, especially in the renewables. So are there any specific incentives for anybody who is interested uh, that you feel you can share? Right for instance, now? in solar energy, um, uh, we have duty free for all the uh, inputs that we take into the country. That is one. And um, uh, what we have done also is uh, normally there is problem of corruption. We have tackled corruption, fraud, and waste in our system, and we have create, created the legal uh, framework so that in policy environment, and uh, what we are doing is we are um, uh, harnessing the, the power of uh, data to actually uh, inform all our decisions in this area. So we are very intentional and deliberate, and you can rest assured that um, when you invest in energy in Sweden, you can have returns on your investment. You, you, 
you re, your country is on course to basically meet these SDGs. What has been your inspiration? Which places have you learned? And what can other countries learn from your country? Well, we have to be intentional and deliberate, like I've said uh, just now, because you, uh, development is not by accident. It should be informed. It has to be planned. But to plan means you have to have the requisite data. And uh, that, is, that should form the basis for your decisions. And we, what we have done as a nation, in a very short time since the establishment of the Global Development Agenda, uh, SDGs, we have reviewed our progress twice. So you should, we should be able to measure and calculate how far we have gone as, as far as um, getting, uh, getting to the point of achieving sustainable development is concerned. And that way you can learn or find ways to tweak your, 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 your way forward so that by 2030 we would have achieved sustainable development goals. Thank you so much. So just as a, a wrap up, what will you advise other leaders? What will you advise other leaders that you've learned yourself being in leadership who want to be able to create sustainable development programs? In West Africa or Africa generally, we are lacking behind and therefore to catch up with the rest of the world I think we have to harness the power of science, technology, and innovation all together. That way, we can um, take the quantum leap into uh, forward so, uh, so that we can catch up with the rest. Without that, um, it will be extremely difficult and a very slow and painful process that we frustrate. So I will tell you that we can use uh, uh, science, technology, and innovation, especially the power of harnessing the power of data to inform our decisions. Thank you so much. Uh, you talked about very interesting ideas that Sierra Leone is doing, and we look forward to learning more in the next couple of years of where that progress will have taken the country. Thank you so much. You're welcome.